Good morning, everyone. We come now to celebrate Palm Sunday, and we begin by the blessing of the palms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say of his passion and resurrection. <clears throat> For it was, it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore now, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over it, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowd preceding them and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. <clears throat> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowd replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And we now join together in our opening hymn. <clears throat> Of humility for the human race to follow. 
caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit, merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you'd now be attentive to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, coming in the likeness of man. Found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your blessing. According to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that very time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your household I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine never will be. And Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, This very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. 
Then Jesus came to them with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass from me without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then he stepped forward. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? Who are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you were talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear, 
I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. <coughs> when it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to have put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and betrayed innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? He did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrene named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. When, and when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watching over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. 
Likewise, the chief, chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. And immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. I invite you all to take a moment to kneel as we ponder the death of Jesus. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men who were with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. And then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him, and say to the people he has been raised from the dead. And this last impostor would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. For our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. About two months ago, I was having lunch with someone who made a statement to me that I had never heard before. He was talking about his faith, and he said that his faith was like a sunshine patriot. And I had absolutely no clue what he meant, and so I asked him to explain. And he told me that... A sunshine patriot was a term that was used in the Revolutionary War to describe soldiers who showed up to serve during the summer months. During the summer when it was warm outside, everybody was eager to take up battle with the British. There was plenty of food and you didn't have to worry about shelter in the evening. You didn't have to worry about 
your ammunition showing up and your armament being ready, all of those things were taken care of. So during the summer, people were willing to leave their families and their farms and their jobs and go fight the British because things were easy and things were good. But it was different, he said, during the winter. Then it was hard to be a soldier. Then it was hard because you didn't have enough warm clothing and your uniform didn't keep you particularly warm. It was difficult to locate food and oftentimes your guns and your ammunition were delayed in arriving on the front. It took a lot of courage to be a soldier during the winter, much less so to be a sunshine patriot. But you may wonder how this relates, this story of the Revolutionary War relates to this Palm Sunday morning, and I think that the same kind of dynamic was going on there. You heard proclaimed in the gospel at the beginning of this mass where the palms were blessed about how the crowd embraced Jesus when he entered Jerusalem. And that was the beginning of what was to unroll over the next uh, five days that would end up in his crucifixion and death. And certainly... It was no mistaking that there were a lot of sunshine patriots hanging around Jerusalem that Palm Sunday morning. They were there out in force, praising Christ, Hosanna in the highest, wishing to crown him as the king of Israel, proclaiming their undying loyalty to him. The sun was out, the birds were singing, it was a beautiful day, but they were sunshine patriots. Later in the week, some of those same people that were there singing Hosanna in the highest would be the ones standing out front of Pilate's doorstep condemning Christ, asking that he be crucified. Certainly, the notion of being a sunshine patriot is not a compliment. It's like being a fair-weather friend, there when things are good and long gone when they're not. I think you and I often take some of our example from St. Peter. There was a time in Peter's life when he was a sunshine patriot, too. At the Last Supper, he promised Christ that he would be with him through thick and thin to the end. He promised Christ that he would stand by him. And yet, it was not eight hours later that he denied him three times, standing outside the front door of the high priest's palace. Yet, Peter wept. He understood the sin that he had committed and he turned his will and his life back toward the Lord. So today you and I are challenged to look at our lives. We need to ask ourselves, are we sunshine patriots in our faith? Are we willing to raise high the cross when things are going good and things are going uh, our way? Are we willing to stand with Jesus when there's no serious price to, pray, to pay for that, simply our act of faith? But are we willing to stand by Christ and stand by our faith when things go south? Perhaps this gospel is particularly relevant for us today. Two months ago, Things were going well for all of us. 
We were able to be out and about. We were able to gather. We were able to go to sporting events. We were able to do all of the things that we enjoy doing. And then the reality of a global pandemic hit us. And we were asked to embrace things that were very difficult for us to embrace. Staying inside, staying six feet apart, avoiding those places where people might gather, taking care that we wash our hands frequently and do all of the things necessary to protect those around us. It's much more difficult to remain faithful during that time it's much more difficult to keep our faith raised high and to know that in our hearts, to know that God is always with us and will always lead and guide us through anything. It's hard to do that when times are bad. And yet that's what the Lord calls us to do today. He calls us to remain firm in our faith. He calls us to remain true to what we say we believe most deeply in our heart, to bear the cross with him and to offer up the sufferings that we endure right now, to offer up those sufferings for the good of others, knowing that God always uses anything that we suffer for the good of those that suffer around us as well as our own good. So today, we make the firm resolve that we are far more than sunshine patriots. Just a word about the distribution of palms. Palms will be distributed in front of the church from <clears throat> noon until two o'clock today. There will be three or four people with masks and gloves that will distribute those to you. We ask that you drive in through the south entrance to the church and you'll be directed where to go and someone will hand you the palms that you request. We ask that initially you take no more than three or four palms so that there's enough for everyone. If you absolutely cannot make it during that time, we'll leave a, a table out in the front with some hand sanitizer there. And we ask that if you come, that you don't pick through the palms, but that you place the hand sanitizer on your hands first and then pick the one or two palms that you want and then depart. And stand back while someone else is at that table so that you maintain six feet uh, distance between you. I know this is a lot to ask of you, but we're not sunshine patriots. We're in it for the long haul. And in order to do that, we need to take these precautions. Just a word also about uh, the events of Holy Week. There'll be mass on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 8 a.m. There are no masses at 8 a.m. on either Thursday or Friday. There's no mass on Friday at all. The Mass on Thursday will be uh, in the afternoon. It will be, at, or excuse me, in the evening, 7 p.m. will be the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And on the following day will be the Good Friday service at 7 p.m. in the evening. On Good Friday, however, there'll be Stations of the Cross at noon that you can join us with on Facebook. Then the Easter Vigil will be 7 p.m. on uh, Saturday evening, and there'll be a 9 a.m. Mass also on Easter morning. All of those will be available so that you can watch and see them. And again, just remember what the bishop told us at the Chrism Mass, that Christ always comes to us if we just open our hearts and ask him to come. Whether we are able to physically receive communion or not, Christ is still there within us, blessing and keeping us and emboldening us and strengthening us so that we are not just sunshine patriots. Have a good and blessed Palm Sunday and know that the peace of the Lord is with you.
we now proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that the good Lord always hears and answers our prayers, we now bring those petitions to his holy altar. That the church be a source of peace and healing during this time of trouble, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish be generous in sharing compassion and resources with those who are suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ always be our King and Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we always remain true to our faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, those near death, and those who will die today, that they find peace in God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we never be a willing pawn of the devil, and to protect us from the influence of the evil one, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of these things through the intercession of Mary, Mother of God. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We invite you now to join in the offertory hymn as we prepare the gifts. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for us, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Now in song, the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the holy apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Therese, the little flower, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and form my divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before I extend the peace of Christ to you, I know how difficult it is to be socially distanced from the people that you love and care about, but in our hearts we hold them close. And so we offer the peace of Christ to each other spiritually today. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And now we sing the Lamb of God.
quite impressed with it. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. For those of you at home, I ask you now to make a spiritual communion, knowing that Christ always comes and joins us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. With these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord to be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's <clears throat> blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Just a word about confession. Confessions will be offered on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30. Wednesday evening will be the last confessions before uh, the Triduum starts. There will be no confessions on Holy Thursday or Good Friday. Have a good and blessed Sunday, everyone. Thank you, Father.